This video is a more detailed look at SAP's IBP Sales and Operation Planning application brought to you by SEM Connections. In the last video we talked about consensus demand planning and how that main key figure was the one that was passed on to the uh, supply side of the organization. In today's video we're going to talk about inventory target and projections and so we're going to run the supply heuristic and we're going to see what all sorts of key figures around net demand and projected inventory things like that. So before we jump into supply I need to introduce you to a very simple data model. It's very difficult to figure out where these numbers are coming from and how they're being calculated unless you have a basic setup. And so in this case I have a supplier who, com who supplies three components, component one, two, and three. Uh, that supplier supplies them equally to plant 101 and 102 and each of those plants has a resource 1 and a resource 2 as well as a sub-assembly. They produce two products called product 1 and product 2 and they uh, equally supply two DCs, distribution centers or warehouses, DC 101 and DC 102 and those two locations do not manufacture anything and produce two products and those products are sent equally to customer 101 and customer 102. We'll show you later how the master data can be changed to change that, but right now it's balanced. In order to really support all the different what-if scenarios that are going on, it's important to be able to control your master data. I think if you had to put a ticket in every time you wanted to change one thing, it would be a disaster. So in this particular case, I brought up the master data for customer source, and I'm filtering it by just product one and customer 101, so you can see the data that's going on. The first thing, the, the main thing you see is there's obviously the, the primary keys or the, the keys of the data which are in orange and then you'll have different values in other columns. That one column, customer sourcing ratio, you'll see a lot of sourcing ratios in, in the IBP tool. That's basically saying that customer 101 gets half of the 50%, 0.5 from DC 101 and 0.5 from DC 102. And right here I'm changing it for to 0.75 and 0.25. And uh, all I have to do in order to save that change is go to the IBP ribbon, click save, and I'm done. It's going to uh, do a little stuff on the background and it's probably even going to give me a warning saying you're about to change, do you want to see the report? And you just say OK and you're done. Again, we'll get into versioning more, but this is just a very basic master data change. So this view of the data is very basic for supply of product. You can see that the attribute is product and the key figures are sales manager forecast, which we've seen before. The uh, consensus demand plan quantity, which if you notice is zero across the board for demonstration purposes right now. I have the inventory target, which is the best way to think about that is safety stock. Again, not at a location level, but overall for this product those are inventory targets. The inventory on hand is the actual quantity that you have beginning of the month, so 5,000 in this case for the beginning of the month. And then you'll see projected inventory quantity, that's the planned inventory levels in the future. And then the production receipts are what we actually plan to produce um, for this product. And then the transport receipts, how much uh, product is being sh uh, transported from one location to another. The real key here is since consensus demand is zero, you'll see all these other key figures for projected inventory, et cetera, to also be zero right now. So same query, you can just see that I put in the consensus demand plan quantity in line for both product one and product two. I just copied the sales manager forecast in to the tool and I did hit save. But you'll also notice that even though I've hit save in the consensus demand, that there's still nothing populated for the projected inventory or the production receipts and transports. And that's because I haven't run the supply heuristic. There's a couple ways I can do that. I can run it up here for under advanced, under supply planning, and you'll see all the different profiles that are available to run that. But I'm actually going to run this in real time, I guess is the best way to explain it. And the reason why is because I didn't want to run it as a job and automatically save the results. I just want to run it and see what I end up with. Now, I'm not speeding up the video or anything like that, so you can get a feel for the performance. Again, the data set's not huge, but still, um, it kind of gives you the response time uh, and what you see. And then you also see what these calculations did. So let's just walk through them quickly. I had a demand of 10,000, uh, consensus demand, but I also had an, in, uh, an inventory target of zero, and I had an inventory on hand of 5,000. 
And so what that meant is that I'm basically 5,000 short, and so that's why you're seeing production receipts of 5,000. And then you're also seeing this 7,500 on the transports receipts, which without location in the query doesn't really make sense of how that number got there. But we'll see in future slides where that makes sense. So a slightly more complex example would be seen in February when you actually had an inventory target of something other than zero. So you saw the consensus demand still 10,000, 82,500 for the inventory target. That means the projected inventory is going to be 82,500 and you're going to see production receipts of 92,500. And then the transports receipts don't make any sense until I actually throw in the location for you here in a little bit. So I kept the same query and just added some things to it. The first thing I did, you could see, is I put in the location ID, so that makes more sense. And then I also added some key figures, dependent demand quantity and the net demand quantity. Um, you can see here for DC 101 that um, if we go through the math really quick for that first period and, and make sure everything adds up the way we expect it, you can see that the inventory target was zero and there was an inventory on hand of 1250. The dependent demand was 5,000, and that was because of the 10,000 consensus demand. The customer gets half of it from this particular DC. Since they already had 1250 on hand, the net demand is going to be 3750 from 5,000 minus 1250. And then at the bottom, you see transports receipts. Well, you don't see any production receipts because it doesn't produce any. It doesn't produce anything. And then there's 37.50 on the transport receipts because that's how much they will be receiving of this product one on their warehouse dock. The next level of complexity would be in the third period where you actually have an inventory target. In this case, 2,500. So again, 10,000 demand, but a 5,000 dependent demand, you can see the net demand going up to 7,500 because of that 2,500 inventory target, and the projected inventory is 2,500. If I were to go look at a production facility now in Plant 101, you can see the inventory on hand was 1,250, the dependent demand was 3,750, that's what they were getting from, from DC 101 or 2 and you'll see the net demand of 2,500 and production receipts to meet that net demand of 2,500. So the last view of the data I wanted you to look at was the financial side of things. So you can see in this query I have it by product family and I'm showing the dependent demand cost and quantity. You can see that I stacked the deck against DC 101 and plant 101. I made it significantly more expensive to produce there than um, at the other locations. We'll, we'll get into another video here of profit, profit optimization. But you can also see in the changing of the query all of the different key figures that are available. And again, this is just standard out of the box SAP. This is, this is uh, for an implementation. You could obviously customize this um, to make it match your business. So to summarize this section on inventory target and projections, you saw in the first query for inventory planning the setting of inventory levels by location and the immediate financial costs associated with them as well as the low level of granularity you can drill down to if necessary to see where all the inventory is. For supply you saw the projected inventory calculations as well as the net demand ones and then you also saw that on demand processing of supply calculation which quite frankly was pretty quick. And then for finance, you saw the out-of-the-box key figures, those calculations that can be configured on the, on the back side, and then also the profit optimization, which will be a source of a future video. He has offered some profit optimization uh, programs as well.